So why do I find this controller interesting? Well, first there's the form factor. Right now it's sitting on top of my laptop. And as you can see, the laptop um, keyboard is actually bigger than this controller. So that's pretty cool. Next thing is that it's the first controller I own, or I have seen actually, which actually has the stem separation labeled on the knobs. So it says vocals, harmonic, and drums. And that's of course also how it's mapped in the new native mapping. So that's pretty cool. The next reason is that uh, it's the first controller that I've seen that actually has scratch bank mapped by default on here. Get back to that later in the video. And also, it's the first one I own with paddle effects, which is of course uh, on a lot of controllers, at least a handful of controllers now and mixers. But uh, at this price level, um, it's pretty cool to have uh, these kind of paddle effects like that. So those are some of the reasons that I found this interesting and was looking forward uh, for it to be mapped, natively mapped and supported in Virtual TJ. Another thing is that this could actually be used with a tablet. It's designed to be used with a tablet. You can put a tablet down here, as you can see. And that's, of course, interesting because even though Virtual DJ only runs on Windows and Mac OS, um, there are Microsoft Surface Pro that could uh, be used with this thing. And I've actually already created a video about that for another controller, which is the, the BeatPad, BeatPad 2, from, uh, also from Reloop. And I have this over here. And as you can see, if I compare them here, the slot is actually wider on the new Redo body than it was on the much bigger BPAD 2 over there. So, where in the video I have made about the BPAD 2, I had to uh, to turn the, uh, the, the Service Pro sideways. This could actually probably fit down here. So it will probably be a really good max match with a uh, with a Microsoft Surface Pro tablet as well, still running Visual DJ, of course. That would be pretty cool. But for this video, I've decided to run it with a laptop. Okay, so what is not so good about this controller? Well, of course, it's plasticky. It's entry-level, really. But like a lot of reloop entry-level controllers, it's better than entry-level. It's just uh, above entry-level. It's also a bit more expensive than usual entry-level controllers. Um, but apart from all the entry-level stuff, of course, like it's all plastic. Everything's plastic here. No metal at all. So everything's plastic. Uh, that's what you would expect. And um, of course, all the usual stuff for plastic entry-level controllers. The throw on this is not too long. Of course, none of the faders are really uh, the level of of uh, magma faders or, or inno faders or anything like that. So it's all, all plasticky. That's what you would expect. And it doesn't have an, an XLR output. It doesn't have a booth output and stuff like that. So that's all uh, what you probably would expect. But uh, there's also a few uh, more, more things. First of all, there are no gain knobs. So no gains. Uh, I've done something about that. We'll get back to that uh, near the end of the video. Also, the EQ up here is only two band EQ, as you can see. The third one is, is a filter. So uh, it's only two band EQ. Um, next thing is there's no mic input at all. So there's no nothing to control the mic. There's no input over here to add a mic. No inputs down here to add a mic. No nothing. This is pure. USB stuff over here. So no mic input, no way to hand the mic at all. So that's something. And of course, it's uh, it's a bit fiddly. They, tr uh, they decided to put the master volume and the headphone volume and the headphone mix over here. So that's actually a little bit fiddly to get to. So this is where you plug in your headphones. This is the master out. And then you have these three, which are actually kind of fiddly to get to these volume buttons. So uh, that's just a few things to take into consideration that are maybe not the best.
So I'm not going to go through all the stuff that it actually does because it had a lot of it is the standard stuff. You have your transport keys. You have your queue. Queue play, you have your sync button. And then you have a mode button. Uh, and that's for the pads. We'll get back to that. And then you, of course, have your pitch faders. Even though they're not long throw there. Have a click click in the middle, so they're fine. Um, you have your loop section. That actually works pretty well. And you can move the loop. So now it comes here. All that sort of stuff. So all that stuff is fine. And you of course have your cross fader. Have your regular faders. Get out of the loop again, like that. And you have your load buttons and you have your standard EQs up here. If they're set to be EQs, which they are right now. So they're only two band, but they work. You have your uh, uh, your way of, of changing your your Q, your PFL here. And you have a little section here. We'll go back to, and you of course have your touch wheels, which can also scratch if vinyl mode is on, like that. So all that stuff is uh, basically uh, how we would expect it. And then you have your eight pads down here, and. Uh, uh, those are pretty cool, so we'll uh, get back to you uh, to those in a in a second. So the pad modes, it actually comes with nine pad modes predefined, and you can see them if you press the mode button without pressing anything else. It shows so on the screen up here, so it can be a bit hard to see, but it basically matches what's on the on the box when it makes sense. So the first one is hot Q, that's the one that's Selected by default, so I have hard cues now. Pretty common stuff. And the next one is regular loops. So I'm clicking again to turn them off again. Totally basic stuff. Next one is touch effects. That's a bit more interesting. That's some predefined effects that's in there. There's some echo stuff. Some some uh, cut-like stuff. Another cut. It's a beat gridding. A flanger. And a phaser. So that's pretty cool. So that's some touch effects uh, that they've just added uh, as part of the mapping. So basic uh, effects set up uh, in a pretty good way. So you can just Click them and off they go. The next one is the sampler. So like you, you would expect, probably. Like that. That's that one. And the next one is slicer. Like that. And then there's the one called Neural Mix. And that's interesting because that's actually the stems feature. So now you have stems on here, on the, on the pads. Um, so to show that we need, we need another track. So let me just load another track. Put some vocals. First we can remove the beat maybe, like that. Beat back in, remove the vocals. I'll click shift to isolate the vocals. Then you get isolation like that. Put the melody back in with the vocals. Still on the isolation. And of course, uh, put everything back in. So those are the stems features. So those are already pre-mapped on here. And then there's a, the, the eighth one, which is also interesting because that's a new scratch bank feature. So the scratch bank mode, uh, it plays from the currently selected scratch bank. And right now I have one of the ones that's that you can download on the extensions. 
So uh, if I play the track, I can just uh, by the click of a pad switch to uh, to scratch uh, sound, and then if I shift click it, I go back to the tra uh, to the track again. So you're probably not going to do this on the playing deck. Probably going to do that on the opposite deck. But it's, it's a very fast way to get from your currently loaded track and back to uh, into a scratch sample and then back again. Like it, it's been, been implemented on uh, some of the new uh, some of the new pioneer. Pioneer mixes, battle mixes you can get. So let me just play this track. And I'm just, just to show, just load the scratch and start playing instantly. And this is actually a whole audio file. So it'll keep playing scratch sounds. And then I can play shift and it goes back to the track. So let me try doing that again. So just pause it this time by doing like this. Take my scratch, scratch it, and it'll probably be on top of another track, right? And then shift click, and I'm back to the track. So I mixed it up the first time. So that's pretty cool, because that's actually the first time that I've seen the scratch pane feature pre-mapped on a controller. So that was the, the eighth, eighth pad. And there's one more pad, which is shift and mode. And that's the, by default, the custom pad page that you get. So that's whatever you added yourself, most likely. So as you saw before, I could do the, uh, the, the stem separation on the pads. If I select this mode, so those are the five stems, like we saw before. But we also have them up here on the EQs, including the filter knob. And you can actually do two, two different kind of setups of these two. I'll go through them, and you get to them by uh, pressing Shift and the Q buttons. So I press Shift now, and this it moves away from uh, from EQ, and now it has vocal instruments and beats, including on the filter knob. So if I go play now, I can remove the beat like that. Or I can isolate it like that. And the next one is instruments. So I can remove the instruments. Or isolate them. Or the vocals. So vocals gone. Vocals isolated. And then there's the, the other mode. So the other button. And now I get the uh, hi-hat on the top one, and then melody and vocals on, this, on the second one, and the kick on the bottom one. So that's something like this. Remove the kick. Remove some of the hi-hat stuff. Hard to hear. But when the vocals kick in, you can see how it Move the vocals. To you. So uh, those are probably more for specific uh, kind of uh, of audio, um, some kind of electronic uh, beats. Maybe that's what the what Atomic says. Uh, but I, I'll probably use uh, the other one. So that's a, a way to instantly get your your stem separation on these ones. And the one of them is exactly what is labeled. The first one we saw was exactly what is labeled here on the box. And the uh, the final feature that I want to point out are the paddle effects, just because they're a lot of fun. And this is the first controller that I own, own with them on. So basically, it's just like enabling and disabling any of the effects. No mystery there. And you can select them here using the shift button, and you can adjust them with all these functions. But basically, those are the paddles. So for instance, uh, if I uh, do an echo and set it to three quarters of a beat, and I go in this direction, It'll just lock it, so it'll be on. But more probably more fun if you go in this direction. It's only on as long as you do it. So with echo, it'll be something like this. And you can turn on and off how much it is. Like that. 
It's a lot of fun. So another fun one, fun one I think is is backspin, especially with the slip mode on, because then you can do something like this. Or you can make it even shorter and let it kick back in. Oh, so of course, very long. If that's your poison. So that's kind of fun uh, to just be able to just slab in like that. So what if I change to the default mapping? If you know me, you know, I've already changed this a little bit, but it's actually only five small things in this case, because it's a great mapping. So what are those? Well, two of them, the two first ones, are actually just that I've selected other things uh, to be selected uh, as modes. So it's just all the pad pages uh, up here. So you can do that in the drop down if you want to, to pick other ones than uh, the ones that, that comes by default. So instead of, First one, instead of uh, touch effects, I've selected auto drops. That's my own pad page. So you can see up here, now switch to auto drops. And what that does is that it actually just uh, does an effect and then automatically switches to the opposite deck when I release the button. So if I play the track here or, uh, or on the left, I do this. and then it plays the opposite deck, as you can see up here. So now this deck is playing. And of course it paused this deck. So that's my uh, auto drop pad page uh, that I very often include in mappings. So that's the first change I've made. The second change is, uh, is another one down here, and that's actually uh, the scratch bank. I know I've just said a lot of good stuff about the scratch bank, because it's a very cool feature. The only problem with scratch, scratch bank is that you still need to know how to scratch, which I don't really. So instead of that one, and I picked a key cue, so I can actually do key play. So over now here, I can uh, simply uh, click these as a cue start, and uh, then uh, in separate keys like this. <laughs> Like that. So that was my second change. The third change has to do with the with the pitch, because usually I, uh, I have pitch reset that I have to remap. But this one I actually already have that on shift sync. So if I go slow here and play the track, so up here you can see it's below 7.4. I can do shift sync, and it gradually goes back. So that already works, but uh, then I've done the shift mode button. That was the one that did the, the custom pad page, which I don't really need. So I've done that to do pitch pitch lock. So I can actually uh, change both both pitches together. So if I have uh, something that's synced and playing, like for instance this, I play this one, synced. And then I set pitch luck and do the pitch reset. Then it'll change together both decks. And I can, of course, fade out of this one. And like that. So that's pitch duck, which can be great if you want to change the pitch of both decks using the pitch reset. So change it on both decks at the same time. Now, the fourth thing that I've changed has to do with the filtering up. We haven't discussed the filtering up too much, but that's the standard filter. The like this. Like you would expect. But that else also can do the, uh, the sound color effects, which you can change in the skin. But I've mapped that, no, the, the little 
thing next to the filter one, a little drop down. But I've mapped that down here. So if I double click uh, the the Q buttons, uh, it'll actually switch between different filter uh, sound color effects and also the vocal effects for uh, for stem separation. So I can do that up here. So I'm, I'm just gonna double click these, and you can see the change. Now it's filter. Now it's vocals. Now it's echo. And now it's noise, which are basically the ones that I use. So let's just hear them. So back to filter. So of course I'm gonna do it on the filter now. And I double click it. And go into the vocals, so I can remove the vocals. Oh, I can isolate them. I do that quite a bit uh, when mixing. So that's a great feature to have fun and up. Double click it again. And it's the echo, so that can be great as an, as an echo out maybe. Like this. As part of a mix maybe. The other one, it's darker, right? And then the fourth one is noise, so I can do that to sweep a noise effect. And that's usually also done as part of a mix, so you can in and out of it. So that was my fourth remapping. So the fifth one is actually kind of a panic button because that's a panic gain. So if for some reason the auto gain that I use all the time has been detected wrongly, so I, I need like 20% more gain and stuff like that, I have mapped the, the top one, the high, uh, the shift function for that to, to manual gain. So if you look up at the GUI, the gain up, and I do shift and high EQ, then I can adjust the gain to give me more gain in case I really, really need it.